Hello and welcome to the third part of the introduction to business statistics. When studying statistics, it is imperative to know about the population and sample. A population consists of all the items or individuals about which you want to reach conclusions, while a sample is the portion of a population selected for analysis. If each of these heads represent the population, then these selected colored heads are your sample. Here are the other examples. If your population consists of all the banks in the Philippines, then the selected banks in the national capital region are your sample. If the entire students in Torres University is your population, then you can just select students taking statistics as a sample. A parameter is a measure that describes a characteristic of a population, and a statistic is a measure that describes a characteristic of a sample. If your topic is about the math proficiency level of students in Torres University, the average math test scores of all the students in TU is an example of a parameter because this refers to the entire average of the population. On the other hand, the average math test scores of 100 students is an example of a statistic because it only refers to the average of a sample of 100 students. Remember that the process of conducting a survey to collect data for the entire population is called a census, while the process of conducting a survey to collect data for a sample is called a sample survey. Data can be obtained from existing sources or from experiments, phone or email surveys, written questionnaire, online questionnaire, direct observation, personal interview, and written documents. In business research, you can use the data available from internal company records. As defined, a sample is a portion of a population that has been selected for analysis. Rather than selecting every item in the population, we collect a small representative portion of the larger population. The results of the sample are then used to estimate characteristics of the entire population. That is inferential statistics, right? But why do we use a sample survey instead of a census? Well, selecting a sample is less time-consuming and less costly. Analyzing a sample is easier and more practical than analyzing the entire population. In medical setting, if you want to know if you have a high cholesterol level, only a blood sample is needed to be tested in a diagnostic laboratory, meaning a bit of your blood is enough to examine a specific condition of your whole body. In statistics, it is possible to obtain statistical results of a sufficiently high precision based on samples. The sampling process begins by defining the frame, a listing of items that make up the population. Frames are data sources such as population lists, directories, or maps. But how do we determine the sample size if you know the entire number of your population? One of the ways is applying the Slovene's formula. In the formula, small n refers to the number of samples, capital N refers to the population, and small e refers to the margin of error, which is usually 5%. Others use 1% and 10%. Now let's have an example. Assuming that I need to determine the average height of students in Torres University, after determining the sample frame, which in this case is year level, I will determine the sample size using the Slovene's formula. Since the entire population is 1,700, I can now substitute the values in the formula using 5% margin of error. By using your calculator and rounding off the values, the sample size is 324. Now, since the number of students is different for each level, we will distribute the sample size proportionally by multiplying the sample size to the number of students for each level divided by the population. Doing this repeatedly and rounding it off will give you these values. 
If the sample total will not be equal to 324, you can add or subtract to one of the levels. Some use geometric mean to figure it out, but it may also depend on the circumstances and judgment of the researcher. After you select a frame, you draw a sample from the frame, and there are two types of sampling techniques that we could use, the non-probability sampling and the probability sampling. In a non-probability sampling, some units of the population have a zero chance of being selected in the sample, while in the probability sampling, every unit in the population has a chance of being selected in the sample. Under the non-probability sampling, we have the convenience sampling, the quota sampling, the expert sampling, and the snowball sampling. Under the probability sampling, we have simple random sampling, systematic sampling, stratified sampling, cluster sampling, and multi-stage sampling. The first type of non-probability sampling is the convenience sampling, also called accidental or opportunity sampling. This is a technique in which a sample is drawn from the part of the population that is close to hand, readily available, or convenient. Example, if you stand outside a shopping center and hand out questionnaire surveys to people or interview them as they walk in, the sample of respondents you will obtain will be a convenient sample. In the quota sampling, the population is segmented into mutually exclusive subgroups. In this example, the subgroups are the male and female bank managers. Then, a non-random set of observations is chosen from each subgroup to meet a predefined quota. The predefined quota in this example is 10 respondents for each subgroup. This technique is usually used in market analysis. The expert sampling is a technique where respondents are chosen in a non-random manner based on their expertise on the phenomenon being studied. Example, in order to understand the impacts of a new government policy such as the new tax system, you can sample a group of corporate accountants who are familiar with this act. In a snowball sampling, you start by identifying a few respondents that match the criteria for inclusion in your study, and then ask them to recommend others they know who also meet your selection criteria. Example, if you wish to survey computer network administrators and you know of only one or two of such people, you can start with them and ask them to recommend others who also do network administration. Statisticians recommend selecting a probability sample when sampling from a finite population because a probability sample allows them to make valid statistical inferences about the population. The simplest type of the probability sample is one in which each sample of size has the same probability of being selected. It is called simple random sampling. It's like selecting a winner from a raffle draw. So some use fishbowl method or tambiolo to randomly select respondents. If you wish to select 200 firms to survey from a list of 1,000 firms, if this list is entered into a spreadsheet like MX Excel, you can use Excel's random function to generate random numbers for each of the 1,000 clients on the list. In a systematic sampling, you start by deciding on the sample size. Then, use the K equals capital N divided by small n formula to identify K individuals. Randomly select one individual from the first group, then select every k individual thereafter. How about I'll show you an example? Let the sample be 8 and the population be 64. By using the formula, 64 divided by 8, the answer is 8. Then, let's randomly select one individual from the first group. In this case, the third head or person or respondent was chosen. Afterwards, we need to select every eighth individual thereafter. In this case, this one was selected. 
Now, counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, another individual will be chosen. By doing this repeatedly, we'll get our 8 samples. And that's systematic sampling. The next technique is called stratified sampling. Here, you divide the population first using subgroups according to some characteristic. For instance, you can classify your sample frame by gender and income level. In the example below, let us assume that I divided the sample frame into four subgroups. Then, the next step is to select a simple random sample from each subgroup. Finally, combine these samples from subgroups into one as your final sample. In a cluster sampling, we first divide the population into several clusters. Clusters are often naturally occurring designations such as provinces, election districts, city blocks, households, or sales territories. So assuming you have four districts in your area, therefore, you need to get a random sample from each of these four districts. Cluster sampling is often more cost-effective than simple random sampling, particularly if the population is spread over a wide geographic region. However, cluster sampling often requires a larger sample size to produce results as precise as those from simple random sampling or stratified sampling. The last but not the least is the multi-stage sampling. The probability sampling techniques described previously are all examples of single-stage sampling techniques. Depending on your sampling needs, you may combine these single-stage techniques to conduct multi-stage sampling. Example, you can stratify a list of businesses based on firm size and then conduct systematic sampling within each stratum. This is now a two-stage combination of stratified and systematic sampling. And that's all for this video. Subscribe, like, and don't forget to hit the notification bell for more updates. Thank you for listening.